Cornelia Davis is going to give a talk uh, about diversity in our industry. Please welcome Cornelia. Sorry about that. I read my notes no wrong. No problem. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Let's see if the slides come up. So. This was going to be kind of the non-tech light interlude between a whole bunch of tech talks, except that it's not light and it is tech. So um, I am waiting, uh, there we go. So I'm gonna be talking about diversity and I'm gonna tell some stories along the way. But first, let's start with a film. Uh, we need some audio. This was my, my one concern. 29% of them are going to be filled by Americans, and less than 3% of that 29% are going to be women. I don't think software engineering is a meritocracy. Being excellent or being good at your job isn't enough if you're a woman in tech. The sort of phenomenon of the programmer has really interested me. Programmer. 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 It's hard to encourage more women to come into an environment that will sexually harass them and not fund them. As soon as a woman gets introduced, it's like blood in the water. When companies started putting these full diversity disclosure reports out there, it became very obvious, wow, there really is a problem. This is something that we need to be trying to address. Women were the pioneer programmers. They've been written out of history, unfortunately. Grace Hopper came up with the concept of real programming languages. Ha, uh, coding's magic. I like coding because instead of us being consumers, we could be like a producer. In the same way that everyone should know a little bit about law and everyone should know a little bit about economics, you probably should know a little bit about computer science. Growing up, I was actually a, a system kid. I didn't know that I could learn how to code like so quickly. The reason that there's a gap is actually related to some really real structural factors. Girls aren't encouraged to pursue computer science. They're overlooked because, you know, it's the boys that are good at science and it's the boys that are taking apart computers at age nine. Most students have no exposure to programming. Computer science should be a requirement in all public schools. This is a Rosie the Riveter moment because the jobs are here and we don't have the workers to fill them. For the digital revolution to truly be great, it can't just be for a certain set of people. I'm hopeful because I think that the tech industry could move the fastest. If we see the problem, we can debug it. This is our country, our cities, our communities, our children, our code. Code. Debugging the gender gap. Okay, so I'm talking about uh, diversity, or unfortunately, the lack of diversity in tech. Now, that was a trailer that you saw for a documentary that was created by a number of filmmakers. Uh, the, the movie is called Code, Debugging the Gender Gap. And what you see on the screen here is Robin Hauser Reynolds, the director, conducting an interview, and also, of course, a, a picture of Grace Hopper. We uh, met Robin about a, a year and a half ago at Pivotal, and so Pivotal became a sponsor of the film and is very, very, very um, uh, dedicated to this issue of changing those diversity numbers in tech. So what I want to do is I want to tell you a little bit of a story. It's a story of two ladies. This person here on the screen is my absolutely gorgeous and super smart niece. Her name is Samantha. This is her in about the fifth grade, and she is really good at math, loves science, just a really phenomenal kid. This is me, about the same age, fifth grade, love math, love sciences. I mean, math is definitely my favorite subject. So let's fast forward a little bit. This is Samantha now in high school. And in high school, I went back and I looked at her Facebook page and I found the following dialogue. Sammy says, today was a moderately good day. And one of her friends says, accept math. And this is my niece who's really good at math. And she says, yeah, I know, haha, -ha, I just got a calculator finally. I'm so lost. Really? Why? Why is she all of a sudden lost now that she's in high school? Well, here's me in uh, roughly 1983. Yes, I have gray hair. And right now, our stories are still parallel. We're still very similar. I'm like too cool for computers. There's no way it's going to happen. I want to be a horse trainer. I'm not going to spend my life in front of a computer. But then our stories diverged 
because I got super lucky. And as a junior in high school, I was in a computer programming class in 1981. There weren't very many then. I was super lucky. This was the first program I wrote. I wrote it with a whole bunch of attitude. I had my arms folded, sure, I'll write this stupid thing. And when I typed run at the end and it counted on the screen, that was a pivotal moment for me. I went, whoa, that is cool. So I went on and I did degrees in computer science and math in college and I've had a 20, great, really fantastic 25 year career in that. So it is true that I fundamentally believe that we need to offer computer science curriculum in all elementary schools or secondary schools. We need to expose people because they otherwise don't know that they might like this. The other problem is that you can't be what you can't see. Young women are not seeing role models. What they see is projected from Hollywood, Silicon Valley, for example. Or here is a panel at a conference, an all-male panel, which is all too common. But you know what? There's a different face to computing as well. And this is Reshma. She is the founder of Girls Who Code. And I could cite you lots of statistics and would be lo love to chat with you about some of these things. But here is a phenomenal statistic. Girls Who Code has a summer immersion program where the girls go and do seven weeks of programming and going out on field trips. And you know what? 100% of the girls who go through that immersion program go into computer science or engineering. 100%. Who can say that? You know what? Exposure, the right stuff, can make a difference. So let's fast forward. This is now my niece. She is a freshman in college, absolutely stunningly beautiful. And this is me in college. This, I worked um, uh, in summer camps, and so this is me in college. Again, our stories diverge. When I was in college in 1983, when I started college, it was at the peak. Roughly 35% of the graduates in computer science were women. Uh, when my uh, niece, who is declared in computer science, went to her orientation, 10% of the 200 plus people there were women. That is a problem. She felt uncomfortable from the first moment. You can do something about that. University of Washington has focused on this issue. They have brought their numbers up from 14% to 30, and they're not satisfied. What they've done is they've changed their curriculum, curriculum a little bit so that their early courses in computer science do things like connect software, not to video games, but to social issues and to other sciences like biology, things that generally resonate with young women. And the interesting statistic is that of the women who ended up getting degrees in computer science from University of Washington, almost 60% of them said they had no intention of doing computer science when they entered. No intention. Exposure. Exposing young women to this field is a big part of the solution. And now, one more. We have to change the characters a little bit, the two ladies. If you haven't seen it, please take a look at the I Look Like an Engineer campaign. So this is all about unconscious biases. So people looked at ISIS and said, she doesn't look like an engineer. And those are the unconscious biases that we have in ourselves. So do you see a vase or do you see two faces? Everybody sees things differently. Well, it turns out that there are things that you can do. We all have biases. I have them, you have them. There's not a person in the room that doesn't. There are things that you can do to compensate. There are videos that you can watch. There's uh, technology that you can use in the hiring process to make things better. The thing is that it's up to all of us to change things. We can't just ignore this. So here's my call to action. Watch this video. This is the video from Google Ventures. It is extremely enlightening. Please watch that video and take a look at it. It's, it's an, hour, uh, an hour well spent. The other thing is get involved. There's organizations that are out there fighting this problem. Girls Who Code and many other organizations, the Khan Academy, they're all focusing on this diversity issue. Donate your time. Donate your money. Do something. Get involved. And finally, I often hear people say, I'm the parent of a daughter, so I need to change. I need to make sure that I project the right behaviors. But you know what? I have one child, and he's a son. 
and I have to model those behaviors for him so that his biases are different in the next generation. So please, that's my call to action for you. I thank you very much, and have a wonderful day.